Hey guys, this is Malachi, and we're going to be doing a small overview of Defense of the Ancients 2, otherwise known as Dota 2. Um, just released recently on Steam. It's been in beta for a few years now, actually. But we're going to look and see exactly what this game has to offer and what they could have added or what they could have taken away from it. Now, uh, the first thing that I really want to start off with is the heroes list. If you go over to the right-hand side on the library, if you've downloaded the game, you can actually go and look through the entire listing of all the heroes that you can pick from, and it has them categorized by their attribute. So if they're strength-based, agility-based, or intelligence-based, all you have to do is look down, and they're right there, nice and lined up for you. Another good thing is if you scroll over it, you'll notice that It'll bring up if it's melee or if it's ranged. And if you click on them, it'll actually give you a brief description as to what their abilities do. It'll give you uh, their attributes so you know what their agility, everything else is, what their attack is, what their movement speed is, their defense. Then it'll give you small stats, and they even show you a video of what their skills actually do. So if you want to know what their silent skill does, it'll give you a small cap of it. Now if you tab over right next to it, it's the item list. Now what's useful about this is, once you get into the game, you'll want to get some of the bigger items, of course, like the, the Skull Basher, or even the Mouse Storm. Now you don't necessarily want to wait until you get 2700. Instead what you can do is you can come over here, click on Maelstrom, and figure out exactly what it is you need to get in order to build the Maelstrom. So it needs Gloves of Haste and the Mithril Hammer. Well you can buy the Gloves of Haste right off the bat and it'll deduct the 500 from the Maelstrom. So instead of paying 27, you know, you get your gloves it'll give you that small bonus so that you can still keep killing enemy AI and then once you have enough for the hammer you can buy the hammer and then once you have enough for the recipe you just finish it off and it'll again deduct it from there so you buy the gloves minus 500 it would bring it down to 2200 if you had 2200 you can then just finish it off right off the bat now let's go ahead and take a look at the store real quick. Now I wanted to start off with uh, this neat little feature, or at least I think it's kinda neat, and it's um, the Steam Workshop, and basically what it is, you can actually, if you're a graphics designer, you're fairly decent at it, you can build your own armor pieces or weapons and actually submit them on the Steam Workshop and sell them for uh, Steam credits. Which is kind of nice. Um, it lets you buy other items from other people or other games, things like that. Um, of course, uh, I would recommend looking more into depth uh, yourself on this, just because um, I'm not really going to get into too much of that. I just thought it was a really neat little idea on that. But let's go and go over to the backpack. And um, right off the bat, I've got a few items and things in here. Um, now you can earn a lot of the, well, you can earn some of these while playing the game or through finishing your tutorial or training, but the drops are kind of random, um, so you won't necessarily get something that's for the class that you're playing, it'll just be kind of random, and you'll also have chests dropping, so you can open up some of these little summer stashes, and you'll also have cards that you can use if you have a compendium. And basically, the card fills in... I know, creepy kind of guy staring at that. You need to change that. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> but uh, basically, it, it fills in the player's information from the tournament in your compendium, and it's one-time use. Uh, like I was saying, you can earn some of these doing the matches and everything. They're just going to be random. Or you can go to the store and actually purchase them. Now, the uh, the only thing is, they are only aesthetic as far as I can tell. Um, I haven't necessarily seen anything that boosts up either attributes or uh, abilities in any kind of way per se. Uh, I haven't seen any of that. These are just aesthetic items. 
So if you want your character, you know, to have neat little hook or, you know, this little guy is a courier, then you would have to pay for it, basically. Um, or if you want to open up the chest, uh, you have to buy these little keys. I want to say they're they're roughly all about 250 I don't think I've seen any that are more expensive than that. Um, but then again, I don't really buy any of this stuff at all, so... Wouldn't be able to give you too much detail on that. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the play, or the, the main part of the game here. Alright, now that we're here, um, like I was saying earlier, the training is basically the tutorial, which I would honestly recommend uh, going through it. It does help you uh, figure out a few things, and then it'll let you play with some of the characters so that you actually know, you, you kind of get a feel as to what you might want to like to play. Um, before I actually do one of, one of the little gameplay tutorials here, um, if you look off to the left-hand side, you can actually do matchmaking. You can find regular matches. Uh, you can find a co-op match, which will basically be five real players against five bot players, or five computer players. Um, you can actually find a team match, which would be, you know, if you have a team. Or you can find compendium matches, which I haven't really messed with too much. I'm um, assuming something with the tournament, and I'm not doing tournament, so. And then you can always go down here, and again, go practice with bots, so that's actually kind of helpful as well. Uh, let's just check out some of the gameplay real quick. And um, just to let y'all know, um, if you do complete some of these missions, you will get some of the sniper's aesthetic equipment. Seeing as I've completed, I want to say three of them, I've got three little pieces. But let's go and get this loaded up real quick. And generally when you're joining a match, there's actually a whole bunch more characters. We saw the list, which can be, I want to say, like 50 or so. But um, whenever it shows up like this, you don't want to sit here and scroll through them and do that. Instead, just remember what the character name is, and you can type it in, and it'll take you straight to them. Because generally there's actually a little, I want to say like a minute timer up here that'll count down before the game starts and then you'll either A, be stuck with a hero that you don't want or don't, you know, don't know how to play or um, you end up losing time and setting your team behind, which is not good. But see, there are the three little items that, again, were completed from the training or acquired from the training, sorry. One thing that I would recommend right off the bat is getting a little animal courier. Just because when you're out in the middle of the battlefield, you don't want to have to run all the way back just to pick up an item. Um, the map itself is actually a fairly decent size. And it's set up to where there's three different lanes. There's the top lane, the mid lane, and then, of course, bottom lane. And... In between each lane, there's actually two towers. Uh, two friendly towers, two enemy towers, of course. And the objective is, while you're defending your tower and having your friendly AI push forward, at the same time you're destroying their towers, making your way to their base, which would be the main objective that you destroy. Now, the only thing about that is, yes, it's a nice large map and everything, but I would have liked to have seen maybe two or three more maps, uh, maybe two extra maps at the minimum. Just because, yes, it's it's fun running around on here. But after a while, the same map gets kind of boring, regardless of what lane or whatever else thing you're in. Now, I actually want to show this to is, uh, here, here we go. Let me go ahead and buy this. And this item will stay in your stash until either A, you come back to your base and pick it up yourself, or B, you have your animal courier pick it up and go drop it off to you. Now before that happens, I'm actually going to have this character killed real quick, and 
this is just to show you something. Uh, you want to be careful when you're running around, because if you end up getting killed, if you notice, well, I guess uh, they're too busy fighting each other. Let me see if I can't uh, run up to the tower. Generally, when you die normally, you'll just die. But if, let's say, you're killed by... Oh, actually, no, it did work. My apologies. Um, if you notice, uh, I was at 100 some odd gold. I'm less than at 80. And that's because when you die, the game actually takes a little bit of the money that you have earned from killing enemy AI. And it will give it to the enemy hero. So try and avoid dying. Uh, this is not one of those games where you push, push, push right off the bat. It's uh, slow and steady so that you kind of build up your character. And then once you're strong enough, you start pushing against them until you, again, you make it all the way to the end, destroy their base, and uh, win the objective. Now again, uh, like I said, this... Um, I really wish they would have maybe put a few more maps in here. Uh, yes, it's nice that there's so many players, but again, maps, uh, same, same objective, same objective, same objective. Or maybe uh, in the workshop, uh, allow people to make their own maps. You know, let them uh, contribute in that form where uh, players can upload what they've created, and you know, if it's if it's a good map, then you know people will play it or download it. Um, aside from that, there really isn't too hard of a learning curve at playing this game. Uh, if you follow the training, you'll do fairly decent at it. That's really about it, guys. I hope this kind of, I guess, helps somebody uh, decide whether or not to download it or even give it a try. Um, Again, it's, I'm, I'm not uh, against it, but I'm not necessarily for it. I do feel that they could have definitely added some more stuff, maybe even a crafting system, too. Uh, you know, even if it's only giving your character plus two to each attribute or whatever else, a nice little crafting system would have worked. But uh, go ahead and check it out. See for uh, yourselves and, you know give it a shot, don't necessarily go off what I say or what anybody else says, this is just to kinda show you what the game looks like more or less. Well guys, uh, enjoy!